Okay, now we are recording. Hi everyone, uh, today is November 13th. Uh, we have a non-regular uh, Jenkins configuration as code project meeting. Usually we meet uh, every two weeks, uh, but uh, this time we decided to have out of order meeting in order to make a presentation uh, of uh, Jenkins configuration as code uh, project by Sladen. Uh, Sladen is uh, our uh, uh, community bridge mentee. Uh, he started working uh, on uh, GCAST developer tools uh, in August and yeah, he will present uh, his work. Um, so, yeah, the agenda for the today's call is uh, just to have this uh, presentation to discuss uh, the results um, and if we have some time left uh, after that, uh, we can uh, discuss common project matters. Uh, we have several people on the call, so it's Sladin, Tim, uh, we also have Antonio and John. Mm. Uh, and yeah, I think we can just start. Uh, if uh, anyone wants uh, to do meeting notes, we have a common uh, Google Doc for that. Uh, so, yeah, you can uh, just uh, find it in uh, JCASC uh, project uh, references. Okay, should we begin? Yep. Okay, so the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you so much, Oleg. Okay, so hello, everyone. So, I am the community bridge mentee. From okay, hold on a second. Just let me share my screen before I start. Oh, I'm sorry for that. Mm. Yep. So I'll go on talking by the time I share my screen. Yep. So I'm the community bridge uh, intern from from Jenkins. I started working, I think, around in August. Or so, I think three 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 months before. So my project was dealing with um, the JCASC validation, the schema validation and developing a plugin, making it much easier for the developers of, the, of, of JCASC in general to just be able to configure their um, YAML files so that whenever they, uh, I mean, you want to set up a Jenkins, you want to set up a Jenkins project using uh, the JCASC file. There wasn't any provision for um editing or being able to make changes to the um i mean being able to have any feedback while writing so you could have errors creep in or um you could you can probably make mistakes and then you could just apply the configuration and realize um that it's not that it's not getting applied so so what we decided was to be able to um i mean rectify that yeah sliding uh, the screen sharing because not working so far yep yep uh, i will share yep Okay, uh -huh. uh, so yeah, if it's an intention, sorry for interrupting. <laughs> no, no problem at all. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, okay. so I had my mentor, Tim, who was very, very helpful and supportive throughout the project. So shout out to him. Okay, so what what was the project about? Yeah, so the main aim of the project was to enable developers to validate the YAML files that they write for Jenkins um, instance via JCAST. So we thought to make life easier for the users by developing a VS Code plugin. I mean, the VS Code plugin is just, I think, it uh, comes as a hand in hand along with the along with the validation, which is the major part, so that it just pulls in the schema file for the Jenkins instance you're running. So I'll just, I mean, I'll just explain to you how we plan to do the project initially. So initially what we decided was uh, the initial schema was written in Jelly, and which made it very, very difficult to test. So what we decided was um, to be able, we needed a better testing uh, framework for the schema so that, um, I mean, uh, we could test it much easier because it was a pain uh, when it was written in Jelly. Mm, okay, so what we decided that we would split it up in two phases. Phase one would deal with the schema redesign and phase two would deal with the plugin, um, with the plugin uh, development. So initially we, we we um, set on supporting a set of different plugins like IntelliJ, I mean, set of IDs, I'm sorry, um, such as IntelliJ, VS Code, and so on. But we decided, I mean, due to time constraints and it being, uh, it took a lot, lot of time to actually uh, redesign the schema. So we uh, we went with just supporting one single IDE, um, that being VS Code, because most of us, I mean, it's, it's a editor loved by everyone. Okay, so let me just talk about phase one since I'm doing an entire project overview. I'll uh, start with the schema redesign. So the things that we did in this, I don't want to go too much into technical details since it's being a demo and it, uh, it'll make much sense to the users that if I just uh, go on to the meet. So 
one of the things that we did was um, we read out the entire schema in Java, which would make it much easier to test. And I mean, in case there were any modifications or any uh, further API schema that we want to develop on top of this, it would make it much easier. So some of the advantages of doing that were to be like the schema can be tested with high test coverage for the generation functions. And it would be easy to modify and restructure if necessary, or if there is any, uh, if you want to develop any API on top of it. So that, that makes it much, much uh, easier to do. Okay, so one of the things um, that we, uh, I'll come to the disadvantages later. So I could just, um, just hold on a second. So uh, I think if I just go through the presentation before I begin with phase, it would make it much easier to understand. Um, yeah, yeah, as you prefer. Yeah. So, um, so once we redesigned the schema, I mean, made it much, much better to use, we uh, decided to go in with a VS code plugin. Now what the plugin does is essentially what you have to do manually is to initially insert the schema and then write your Jenkins YAML file, and then just use the schema for validation uh, using the Red Hat plugin, which was uh, developed. Uh, I mean, the YAML plugin was developed by Red Hat. I'll come to the details later. Don't worry about that. So, basically what we decided was we wanted to make life much easier for even much easier for developers so that they don't have to go in and pull your uh, jenkins i mean if you go and look um um you can see my screen i think it was um hold on a second if you have a look at manage jenkins mm, configuration as code yeah so what users had to do initially, so this is the newly generated schema. What users had to do initially was we had to just copy this entire schema onto a json.schema json file and then use a Red Hat plugin to validate. So we decided that isn't very efficient for the users because then they'll have to just keep downloading the schema again and again and again. So if there is any change made whatsoever, if there's any new plugin installed or there's new security change or whatever. So what we decided was to be able to make life easier by installing the by developing a VS code plugin. So what the VS code plugin essentially does is it does all of this for you. It takes in the latest changes from the Jenkins, from the Jenkins instance, and then downloads the schema file. So what you basically as a user have to do is just, um, just write in your YAML file, uh, make some settings changes, and then you're good to go, which I will, um, show you. Uh, okay. So, um, move ahead. Yeah. So what does the VS code plugin do exactly? So the VS code plugin, basically just downloads your instance by using your username and token, which ensures that we maintain complete security and there is no um, half-hearted attempt in ensuring that there is uh, the users don't, I mean, the admin of Jenkins, the run who's running the instance is fully secured. So what we decided that you, the VS plugin ensures that you don't have to go and search for the latest configuration. So that's another plus point because you don't have to uh, manually go in and navigate using a bunch of UI buttons to the Jenkins, to the schema file, download the schema file, copy paste it in the file, and then um, do all of that. You don't have to do that. You just give us the URL of your Jenkins and your token and boom, we run in with the instance. Um, if you want, there is, um, if you can fly in the plugin here in the marketplace, so these slides will be shared with you later. So you can just um, have a look at the, if you want the marketplace URL that we shared with us with you. Uh, another point that I wanted to touch on is if you want to read more about, I've not gone into much detail about how we implemented the phase one, um, YAML, uh, the configuration, but if you, uh, the schema, I'm sorry, but if you want a rough overview, I could give it that we in the schema redesigning, basically we just, uh, we just took the old schema that was being, that had been written in jelly and not, a there was not a hardcore, there was not a, hardcore conversion that we did, but basically we made, made sure that for every, um, for every key value pair that we, uh, generate, there is a corresponding descriptor and no descriptors were missed out. And basically it's just a, it's just a read, uh, it's just a redesign, uh, with a few, with a few modifications. Actually, if you want to read more about it, I have a blog post. So for the size I shared with you, you can just, uh, read the blog post that, that is, that is quite, quite informative and descriptive. So you can just go on and have a look. Okay. I think that's about it. If you want, that's about for my presentation, of course, the demo incoming, you can go and read much about, uh, you, know, you can have the plugin URL, the meeting URL. You can just hop onto our guitar and kind of comment over there 
any feedback would be very very highly appreciated so okay so hopping on to the demo so uh, let us begin so basically the first thing that you want to do is obviously have your jenkins instance running so that's um i guess i don't need uh hold on yeah so your jenkins instance running so if you see here and configuration as code you have the json schema um url so you can if you want to manually anytime check out the schema how it i mean what what are the contents you can easily go ahead and check it out so step one mm. so step one is to navigate to your favorite id currently we support only vs code so i mean prefer we have plans for ids for the but yeah so okay so step one would be to fetch our fetch our uh, plugin i think it is okay yeah yeah so um apologies for the user docs because there haven't been much written uh, but you will get a detailed uh, user doc um, i mean how to use the schema how to use the plugin essentially written here so uh, you don't need to worry about that so you, once you install the plugin you just in this plugin i think uh, i think um, joseph just added a um, fix so that you don't have to download the red hat plugin but yeah once you download this plugin you need to make sure that you have the red hat yaml plugin support uh, installed as well so that is this one right here so because our plugin essentially depends on the auto completion and the intelli sense um, on the red hat yaml support because they have the language server well implemented and it's no point in reinventing the wheel so we start with the yaml um, the red hat plugin that was developed so once you have both of these plugins all set and ready what we need is okay so first of all your jenkins instance log into your jenkins instance obviously and um, uh, so once you're logged in you will be able to generate a user token we need this user token to be able to maintain complete security so if you see here um, i mean you can generate your token here and you will get um, you can name it give it a username and um, you will get the token generated so what you basically do after that is to go to file preferences settings and just search for jcas because that okay so you enter the schema url that is the url from your um, from your browser and you enter the user token so i've generated a user token as you can see uh, the username is said in id and you will get your user token so after that what you do is you um you basically down you activate your plugin by using control shift p and if you have a look you can see it right at the top but if you don't find it you can just type in jenkins um, and it will auto complete it for you and you hit the first you obviously click it once you click it what the plugin does is it downloads a jcas schema dot json for you in your current working directory so if you want it downloaded elsewhere i mean you could just open the um you could open the editor um in your directory and just download the um, schema there the json schema so as you can see this is the schema that we've downloaded and it is named as jcas uh, schema.json you can rename it if you want so ideally i would suggest to keep it as it is uh, making it much easier for for you to know what the schema pertains to after that i would uh, after that you just have to configure a couple of settings now why you need to configure these settings is because uh, we need to tell the red hat yaml plugin that hey uh, this is my schema file and uh, i want all files with yml to be auto completed using the uh, jcas schema.json you can definitely modify this regex as you wish there are a couple of modifications mentioned in the blog post you can go ahead and check them out so what you would essentially do is uh, to ensure that this name and the name for your schema is the same because this is essentially your key so you rename it to whatever you've renamed the json schema to i would uh, like recommend keep it the same or you could keep something shorter if you're not fond of typing like me so <laughs> so that once you do that um you can essentially go ahead and create your uh, i mean this is my user space you don't need to you can just go ahead and create a new uh, jenkins.yml file and once you create a yaml file i think that's basically it because you have um now you have your red hat plugin installed you have the vs code plugin installed you have your schema 
and all that is left is i mean to go ahead and complete i mean go ahead and write down your file so for this demo um so as you can see if you go ahead and want to configure a basic jenkins um for example you want jenkins as a root configurator so as you can see intellisense is well supported um if you i mean i guess uh, in the initial schema we had uh, jdk supported as well uh, just hold on mm -hmm. It is Jenkins. It's quite slow. Mm -hmm. Configuration is. Hold on a second. It looks like a demo effect. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yeah, as you can see, if you if you just go ahead and I mean type out whatever you um, I mean the system message or something, IntelliJ will just complete it for you because you already have the JSON schema. Um, along with that, we have the validation. So if if at all it recognizes that you're typing something wrong, um, you would get it highlighted because the Red Hat plugin supports that as well. Um, I guess I could demo it if it if it was if it was showing me something, but it's not. Show me. Hold on a second. I could. Maybe something is wrong with settings. No, hold on. Go to trash. Check your schema to JSON. Hold on. No, no, no. Don't create a folder for me. Create a file for me. Change this to file. Good boy. Yeah. So hopefully this sticks, but. Uh, it doesn't stick at all. Okay. Yes, yeah, so if, if if it was sticking, it would obviously um, highlight all of the changes that you made, and it would tell you that it expects an object instead of a um, uh, instead of a value key value pair. So you would essentially realize that the plugin, um, I mean, validates itself. So um, that would be basically um, it for you, and then you can easily. With, with one of the features that we plan to do was once you apply the configuration, uh, it would automatically validate it. So you would don't have to, I mean, go through the pain of validation. You would just use it for auto completion and then um, you could, uh, I mean, just load it into JCASC and that would work right out of the box. So yeah, that's that's about it for, um, that's about it for uh, everything that I wanted to demo. Um, if you have any questions, you can just throw it at me. Uh, there was uh, one issue created by Dominic Bartoldi about uh, multiple uh, Visual Studio Code plugins for Jenkins. And the yep. suggestion was to move authentication logic to a separate plugin, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, have you considered for that uh, while working on this plugin? No, actually, we haven't considered that because uh, I mean the authentication part was suggested by Tim so that we so that if if the user didn't have any permissions, it wouldn't make it much more secure to have them. Uh, but uh, as he suggested, I mean that could be uh, possibly one of the um, things that we would consider making a VS Code plugin for authentication in general, so that we can support because every time the user would have to configure it for every as you can see here itself, you just have to change a bunch of settings so that. Um, maybe as a future project or maybe as a continuation of this as well, you could uh, make it much easier for users so that they could just write a single configuration and that would, uh, I mean, the plugin would take care of the rest. Mm, it would be great if it was automatically discovered in Jenkins YAML at least. It yeah. doesn't cover all cases, uh, but at <laughs> least basic ones. Nope. Yep. Yeah, right now it doesn't seem to work even for that. Maybe ID reload could help, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it's working, but I think the schema, there's a, what, an old schema or not a right schema that was downloaded. Yeah, because we've, uh, yeah, because if you've, um, I mean, if it's working, if it's um, picked up from the old Jenkins instance, you would not get any, um, you would not get any, the schema would just not, it's not, it's just not correct for the, for the, yeah, so, for the Yeah, so we have some time, maybe we could try to get a uh, real schema. Yep, we could actually, um, hold on a second. Um, give me one second. So, I, I would. So, what what branch? So, what version of the configurations code plugin are you using? I think we picked it. I think one three eight point four to. Um. Yep. Yeah, it was one three. 
8.4. So yeah, as you can see, there isn't, um, yeah, there isn't the things that we initially planned in the schema. So because uh, I can't find Jenkins, you can find, you might be able to find Jenkins here. So the, the auto completion doesn't work with that version nope. because the, um, yeah. the nested configurators PR was never merged. Yeah. So yeah, on, 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 uh, only type validation works with the yep. current version on master. Do you want me to change this branch? So I, I think you would yeah. get your type validation if you put Jenkins system message and then a number in there. Uh, looks like system. And a space between the yeah. two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. String. So, so the type type validation is working, but if you could swap to the branch that's not merged, and if you could get the schema from that, mm -hmm. then that would look a lot better. Yep. Yeah. So it you means. Want me to... that... oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So it means uh, that we still need uh, to do some integrations and releases before this functionality uh, fully. Yeah. Works. Yeah. Before it, uh, actually, we have tested it on the Nested schema, and it does work pretty. Uh, it's pretty cool there. But um, if you have that PR merge, I think that 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 would help us a lot with with the yeah. Nested theme because that's the entire crux of that thing. Yeah. So, so that PR works pretty well. There's a couple of bugs, um, which need to be fixed, but could be fixed in follow-ups potentially. Yep. Yep. Uh, I have a question. Yep. Yeah. So to begin with, thanks for this work. It's, it's amazing. I think it's going to be really useful. Uh -huh. um, and my question is, in well, it, it's more a thought, but in a, in an enterprise context, you usually have to manage more than one Jenkins instance. Uh, have you thought about uh, somehow integrating the schema URL into the Jenkins YAML? So everything you need is inside the Jenkins YAML already, other than the username and password. That, that could be IDE setting, but then the Jenkins YAML could point to the actual schema URL of the Jenkins that that Jenkins YAML is for. So you can handle multiple Jenkins channels in the same IDE without having to change the URL to Jenkins in the settings. I don't know uh, if I if I raise, raise an issue on GitHub sounds like a good feature request. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not sure how you'd handle it. How you'd know which Jenkins? I guess you could do it by the file name and configure a mapping. Um, but yes, yeah, sounds like a good feature because. You may have different Jenkins with different plugins. So the schemas will be different. Yeah. So one of the opportunities is to extend the uh, Jenkins YAML schema itself to inject uh, this metadata. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, we already have uh, JCASC plugin self configuration in Jenkins YAML, so nothing really blocks us uh, from injecting extra data there. Yeah, but I'm not sure if it would work so well because um, you can you can have multiple you can merge multiple schemas together to um, so you can have like your security, your, your common and your instance specific, um, YAML files and they all get merged together. Yeah. Um, well, but possibly it could go there. Yeah. Technically we could say that uh, there should be always Jenkins YAML master file, which includes uh, this basic, basic configuration and metadata. Yeah. So yeah, it's a subject for specification improvements, um, but yeah, we can probably do such change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I have a general question about uh, this work. Uh, what's next uh, for the plugin? Yeah, we see that uh, there are still bits to be yeah. finished. So what's your plan yeah. for that? Yep. So the first plan was to actually get the nested. Actually, I was going to get the nested schema uh, merged. I didn't account for my uh, confidence appearance. Actually, I wasn't sure there were others going. So I'm sorry for that. Um, but uh, during that time, I guess the next part of the project that I had planned was to fix the nested schema because that is the entire PR that probably 
will let us work with uh, almost all of the descriptors. As you can see here, um, we don't have some, we do have Jenkins, but we don't have the nested support for Jenkins. So that would be one of the first URLs uh, that serve first PRs to get merged. And I think apart from that is, um, I think there was an issue on GitHub created for the, um, for having a, I think sort of a generalized plugin. And so that would, that that's a, probably a second thought for consideration. And yeah, those, those probably improving the plugin to an extent where it's usable, not only for Jcast, I think across, across the board would be, I mean, uh, a plan. Yep. That's about it. Oh, I was muted. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Are there any other questions or comments? Uh, maybe you would like to add some comments about the project, about the status, uh, etc. Um, yeah. Um, so I think that um, we're in a much better shape than what we were before. Um, previously, the, the feature for um, the configuration of code schema um, just unfortunately didn't didn't work at all. Um, so we've had to throw that code out and. Uh, we now have a much easier to, well, the code's a lot easier to follow, there's tests around it, um, and it's much easier to extend and fix um, bugs around it on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, before, it was some pretty crazy jelly code that not very many people could understand. Um, and so even just out of the box, most plugins just work. Um, once we've got this nested, um, this nested, um, uh, the pull request that's outstanding merged, um, then this should work a lot better and it, and it's really, it works really well. There's help documentation um, in line in VS Code for all the properties. Um, you have auto completion, uh, everything you want, all your, all your intelligence. Um, and the VS Code plugin doesn't do a lot at the moment, but it does make it easy to fetch the schema and update it without having to go into the Jenkins UI, so it's quite useful. Um, but it's a good starting point for further extensions as well. And any ideas are greatly welcomed. Um, I think the links to the GitHubs have already been sent out, but um, just feel free to raise any issues on GitHub or come join us on Gitter and um, send any feedback along. Thank you. So yeah, I would like to add that uh, it was basically uh, our first community bridge project. So yeah, community bridge is a new project uh, produced by Linux Foundation just last spring. And uh, our idea was to try out some uh, project ideas uh, which we can self-fund as Jenkins project. So basically we are using uh, Jenkins funds uh, for this particular run and yeah, we will be doing uh, community bridge projects again next year. So yeah, thanks a lot uh, to Slide and to team for running it because yeah, I know that uh, uh, it was a bumpy road because we just started, we still need uh, to document something. Uh, it's not like yeah. JSOC, which has probably too much documentation for everything, uh, but yeah, uh, we will definitely improve and uh, any feedback will be welcome. But uh, from what I see that yeah, we actually were able to get some good outcome. Yeah, it needs to be polished, it needs to be integrated. But uh, the major things are integrated, and hopefully it will be useful for Jenkins configuration as for plugin users. Okay. okay. Uh, are there any other comments, questions, topics? Uh, Sladen, did you get the? Were you working on getting your PR set up instead to show that one? The which the nested schema? Yeah, I thought you were. No, no, actually, yeah, I haven't got that ready. Do you, I mean, that could if you if you're the, developing the plugin, we could just hold another demo and get that working. That would be yeah, sure. I mean, when we have the nested schema done, we could just hold another beat, uh, demo for it. So it's not like I'm abandoning the plugin. <laughs> yeah, so 
what we could do, we could schedule, for example, Jenkins online meetup uh, to talk about Jenkins yep. configuration as code. Um, I'm not sure what would be the timing, uh, maybe before Jenkins walk, maybe after. So, for example, if we could uh, get uh, two talks related to Jenkins configuration as code, uh, I'm happy to organize an online meetup for that. that yeah, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. uh, so, is it even working? Uh, mm, so, uh, slotting, uh, what do you think about two weeks? Would it be enough to just uh, close down this stuff? Yeah, no, yeah I guess. Uh, it, yeah, I do have my exams coming up, but uh, I guess if I, um, I'm not, be, I'm not sure whether I'll be able to commit to, um, to contributing within this period. But I mean, if, if at all I do get because it's from the 14th to the 26th, so I'm I'm busy for around two weeks exactly. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm I'm not sure whether I'll be able to commit. But if I do have time, I will. So, um, but I can't make any promises with respect to the next two weeks at least. Maybe yeah. maybe after maybe after the after twenty sixth. Um, yeah, let's take a look. So yeah, this is our calendar. So we have Jenkins online meetup uh, on Tuesday, I guess. Next week we have another one on Friday for documentation. Still needs to be announced. Uh, yeah, then uh, one week uh, we yeah. So this is Jenkins world. So after December nine, we can basically take this yeah. week or this week. Yep, December, yep, December 9th, that sounds. Okay, then uh, I'll just start to doodle. So if all of us agree that we do online meetup, um, I'll see what we can do for the second topic. Because yeah, it's better to have two presenters. Oh, yep. But we can do just one. Or maybe uh, overall overview of uh, JCASC advancements over past year, because yeah, we haven't done that yet. Uh, so yeah. Mm. Yeah, okay, sure. In, uh, in December then. Yep, that sounds good. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, I think we have enough time for that. Okay. So yeah, thanks a lot for that. Uh, should we go back to the common agenda? Or should we just close down the call? Because yeah, I'm not sure how much time everybody has. Yeah, I need to go and my battery's got like 5%. Okay, so I think that, uh, yeah. So we are back to the common schedule, uh, I guess. So we can do the meeting uh, next Wednesday during the usual time. Are we, able to, are we able to adjust it an hour for um, daylight saving? Oh, that's a good topic. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, okay, I'll just share my screen again. Do you see it? Yeah. Yep. Mm, yeah, next to JCASC. This house. Yeah, so, yeah, rescheduling meetings would be nice. Maybe even moving uh, them to the time frame uh, when uh, United States can participate. Uh, but, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I can move it later as well. Mm. Okay. Mm. So I can just start to doodle, for example. Okay. I'm not sure how much slots I would have for that, but yeah, let's try to find uh, something. Okay, so yeah, done. But yeah, it would be important to keep running JCAST meetings. Uh, and yeah, maybe if you can uh, drive attendance a bit so that we get more stakeholders participating. Um, yeah, we also had some uh, results uh, after Oktoberfest, which we can discuss uh, next week. Um, so yeah, I think cool. that we have an agenda for a couple of meetings for sure. All right, thanks. I gotta go now. Thanks. Okay. Have a good yeah, day. Thanks all. Uh, thanks everyone. Okay, I'll get the video published. Bye. Yeah, bye.